The city of Rome has many titles. It's the city of Caesar, the capital of the Roman Empire. It's the city of the Baroque. There's Michelangelo's Rome, Bernini's Rome. It's also known as uh, the city of the apostles. And the apostles Peter and Paul loom very large in, in Rome. And just recently we celebrated their feast day, which for Romans is the birthday of Christian Rome. And not unlike our 4th of July there, I don't know how it was this year, but there are picnics and parades and fireworks. People celebrate these two giants of the Christian era. Peter and Paul were persecuted in Rome. They were martyred in Rome. They, were, they are buried in Rome. Their tombs have been the source of Christian pilgrimages for 2,000 years. Their legacy looms so very large. All in all, there are seven apostles uh, buried in the city of Rome. Uh, Cardinal Supic uh, has a very special honor in Rome. When a, a bishop becomes a cardinal, uh, they become a priest of the Archdiocese of Rome. The ancient tradition of the church is that the Roman priests elect the Roman pontiff and each cardinal is named an honorary pastor of a parish in Rome, and Cardinal Supic has the honor of being the pastor of the parish of St. Bartholomew, where the apostle is buried uh, under the main altar. Key to our creed, the creed we recite every Sunday, is that we are one Catholic, holy Catholic and apostolic church crucial to our identity as Christians is being apostolic. The word apostle means to be sent. We are sent to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, every single one of us. I often think of uh, Rome as a big, big wheel, and the hub of the wheel is over Rome, but there are these spokes that reach out to the rim. And if we trace the foundation of every Christian community, in the world over all of history, wherever that Christian church has been founded, it's always been founded by someone who was sent, and many ultimately sent from the city of Rome as missionaries, as evangelizers. As we listen to this beautiful gospel today that speaks of the 12 apostles, we are invited to meditate on our own sense of being apostolic, our own sense of feeling we are sent, um, as Roman Catholics, we don't see our Christian faith as a personal, solitary journey. We see ourselves working together, ministering together, evangelizing together. The work of the church is revealed through the witness of many people, not just one person working in isolation, every single one of us. And the challenge to be an apostolic church is always very pressing. It's particularly pressing at this time of pandemic when the normal ways that we would evangelize are limited. But that doesn't mean we don't stop being apostolic witnesses through our prayer, through the ability for some of us to come and celebrate the Eucharist, for our acts of kindness and generosity for others. All of these expressions are part of the great apostolic tradition, a tradition that we trace to these very first apostles that you and I share in. Today, we praise God for the gift of being apostolic. This today might have some opportunity for you to be an apostolic witness Maybe you might call somebody who you know is living alone and feeling isolated. Maybe today we would remember in prayer some of these suffering people in our own parish dealing with illness or grieving. We might pray today for uh, people who are suffering because of this epidemic, for those who may have lost their jobs or families that are under crisis because of the circumstances we find ourselves in. Today, we embrace our apostolic mission as we follow in the footsteps of the Twelve Apostles.